All right, so we started up our pool heater uh, around 10 o'clock this morning. It was about 65 degrees. And we were able to get enough solar on there to start it up. And we were running, we're running these around 35 to 50% right now, but that's charging each one of these batteries. It's at like 95. Um, get my cheaters on. It's uh, 95%. We're bringing in 11.9 amps to charge this battery while we're running our pool heater, two of our pool heaters, and our pool pump at 2,800 RPMs. So we're doing that with these six inverters right here. And we're only running... We're 50% or less on the total output. And we're able to do that because we have six of these where we have a 5,000 watt array, 3,000 to 5,000 watt array hooked up to every one of these. So we have six different arrays. Um, we have uh, six kilowatts here, 5120 watts there, 4640 watts. 4,000 to 5,000, those are bifacial watts. This one's 3,200 watts, and this one's 3,000 watts. But I've only got 1,500 in the sun on this one. Everything else is in full sun. So we're completely running that, and we're staying below 50% on our output, which means we're around eight to 9,000 watts right now that um, we're using to run our 127,000 BTU uh, pool heater, our 17,000 BTU pool heater, and our um, 2,800 RPM pool pump while we're charging this at 11 amps on each one of these batteries to get them charged up. So we're running all that and charging the batteries at the same time. That is a lot of power. And... I had to get to that point to be able to be able to run my pool heaters year-round now. <laughs> I tried doing with the grow watts, but they just didn't have the umph. I even tried adding another 5,000 watts on an EG4 charge controller. I added another 68 amps, and I still couldn't keep, um, couldn't bring enough solar in to keep up with the demand. And that was just running that one. And it was running that at like 1800 RPMs and I still was having a hard time. So our water temperature is at 60, 66 degrees right now. We started at 46 the other day and I'll be honest, it was like five, six days ago and I forgot to run the heater. Um, that is at, let's see if I can get in close. 74 degrees going out into the pool 66 coming in from the pool 74 degrees because it goes in there comes out of there goes into this one and then comes out and goes in the pool so we're at 74 degrees um and honestly i've been only running the pool like maybe two three hours <laughs> today i'm gonna run it for about five hours so we should be able to get a 15 degree increase uh, it's already been an hour, so another four hours. Should be able to get 12 degree increase from that um, 66. So we should be right around 73, 74 degrees by three o'clock. And then I might lose three to five degrees overnight because it's an in-ground pool. And it's still getting in the 40s and 50s overnight. So the even with the cover on, it's still um, the the earth around the pool is still really cool from the winter. So it's getting close though. You know, a week ago, we only had like six inches of sun on the pool over there. And now we got about four to five feet. We're getting a lot of shading. Um, getting a lot of shading on here from the pergola that we have set up, but we have that so we have shade in the summertime because in the summertime the it is straight up uh, actually it's facing a little towards the north the sun in the summertime so 
Um, when the July and August, instead of the sun coming straight down here, it'll actually come into here a little bit. So we have all of this shade for us to use the stuff in the summertime. But I never thought when I first started doing off-grid solar that I would be able to heat my pool. I thought maybe I might be able to run my pool pump on like, you know, a thousand RPMs or something. <laughs> but it's insane what I can run. I mean, right now I'm using eight to 9,000 watts to charge my batteries and run my pool heaters, two of them, and the pool pump, along with three, uh, four freezers and a refrigerator freezer. We got a freezer outside here. This is a convertible one. But we're running a bunch of stuff on this 24 hours a day. And uh, these pergolas work really great for the uh, solar panels up on top. You just got to clean them off. I, I have these at a slight angle, like a three degree angle for the water to shed off on the pergolas. And my solar arrays, that one's like a 35, no, nah, it's actually closer to 40, 40, 42 angle. That's probably only like a, maybe an eight degree, five degree, eight degree angle on the sheds on that one and the other array. And this one over here is just a slight angle, like two or three degrees. It's not very much, but it's enough for the water to shed off. And I just cleaned all my, um, a lot of my solar, I cleaned that one over there, the far pergola with the bifacials, and I cleaned this one today. And we're getting great output on it. So, uh, we've got 75 degrees going in the pool right now. So, and we have a variable speed jacuzzi uh, pump. This was 230 volts when I had it installed. But I actually got in here, rewired it with a plug where I can plug it into my solar here. And I plug it into that solar outlet and it uh, runs on 115 or 120 volts. And that is self-sensing. So when you actually go to plug it in, it'll sense whether it's 120 or 240 or 230 or whatever it is. It automatically senses. There's no switch or anything. It automatically um, determines what the voltage is and that's been running great I've been running it like that for like about four years now on the uh, plug like that so and I just bought that it was like a mm, six or nine foot extension cord where it was uh, bare wires on the end and then a plug on the other side I think they were like nine bucks six or nine bucks so that works really good anyways we uh, should be able to get that pool up. It's uh, Tuesday. We're hoping by the weekend it's supposed to be in the 80s already. And it'll be like, we'll still have a week left in February of 2025 to, uh, to go. And it's usually our coldest month, but we're getting a nice little warm wave in here. Every once in a while we get one of those. So we're actually dropping down on our output um some of these are staying at 49 50 percent but some are dropping down to 43 to 45 uh this one's coming up because it's getting more sun on it so and our battery whatever this battery says the other ones are pretty much the same so we're going down to 7.8 and we're at 96 so as it gets closer to 100 percent this current coming in is going to drop because um, it starts to um, charge with less current as it gets close to topping it off. So we're at 96 on our batteries. They were at 90 or 91 when I started at 10 o'clock and it's almost 11 o'clock. So by 11.15, 11.30, we'll be fully charged on our batteries. And then we'll just run this to about 3 o'clock, see if we can get it about 73, 75 degrees in the pool. If it's 73 to 75 in the pool, the water temperature coming out of the pool heaters will probably be around 86 degrees going into the pool. So 
I'm about 10 to 14 degrees difference of the incoming water temperature to the outgoing water temperature. So uh, those heat pumps are really nice, but that big one uses a lot. <laughs> it's like 6,000 to 6,500 watts at 230. So um, these are working excellent for it. Like I said, you could use a six kilowatt, couple of six kilowatts of the EG4s or the two 12 kilowatts. Um, a little overkill because I don't need that much. I'm really never going to use 18 kilowatts, but in order to run my pool and keep these around 30 to 40 percent output, where I'd rather keep that than run, you know, uh, four of them at full bore, getting around 28. 3,000 watt output. These will last me a longer time if I'm only running half percent to um, run that heavy load of that uh, pool heating and the pool pump. Um, my regular usage that I would use would be my three and a half ton and my four ton, the upstairs and downstairs air conditioner, and then the 18,000 BTU, and with those, I might use 7,000 watts. So, 7,000 watts divided by six of those, you know, you're only talking like um, not even 1,200 watts out of a 3,000 watt output. So, you're not even really, nah, you're not even at, um, you're one third. So, I like them. I've had not one fault, one error code with them. Some of the people, the viewers, don't like them. Um, I don't know why, but I've had these for about six months now. I've had not one single issue with them. So they are working perfect. I think some of the problem is a lot of the DIYs will make a mistake when they're connecting it. And um, that could be one of the problems. I think the biggest problem with probably 90% of people not liking high frequency inverters is they're buying cheap knockoffs on these um, websites that are um, a, a total knockoff, a um, fake inverter. It, they, they take the technology and they try to reverse engineer and put out an inverter for you know like 20 percent cheaper than the actual real inverters that are being sold the fake ones are being sold a little cheaper but those aren't going to last they they're putting inferior products in those <laughs> and they're going to fail as soon as maybe a week or two to a couple of months maybe a year or two but i'm expecting these things to last um you know probably three to five years without any problems but i'll be honest within a year i might even have different inverters on the wall because i'm i've already gone through four 2400 watt mpp charge con or uh, inverters um i went through a 5000 watt mppt or mpp uh 6500 watt mpp inverter a six kilowatt grow watt two 12 kilowatt grow watts and i finally am using these so i've gone through a lot of inverters and i actually started out with a harbor freight 5000 watt and a couple of 2000 watt uh, modified sine waves but all these inverters that i've been using after the harbor freight were all pure sine wave output and then recently i used the um, panel none of this uh, off grid is connected. This is my uh, grid, and this is my grid over here. And I have um, nothing of this off grid connected in any way, shape, or form to my grid. So it's completely isolated. Whatever I'm running on the other side of the house, I had to run wires from this electrical panel all the way to the other side for the three and a half ton, the four ton, and the 12.7 ton, um, those all have separate wire going to each one of them, and they have a separate breaker. So that big pool heater is this 250 amp breaker, the four ton is 230 amp breakers, 
and the three and a half ton down here is this um, double 30 amp breaker, the 18,000 um, BTU mini split over here is overkill. Um, that only uses like 2,600 watts, but I've got it on an 18 or a 30 amp double breaker. I could probably get away with going with like a 20 amp, like one of these 20 amps here. So, but this is a two um, 200 amp breaker box and is completely off grid. None of those, you can see all those um, flexible conduits coming out and going everywhere. Those are all going out to something outside or something here in the garage. And it, um, it's, if you're going to run off grid, you got to run wire tall. Now I have the pool pump. I have two mini splits out there and the pool heater and I can plug those in. I have two outlets out here, out there that I ran wire to on both of those. Um, but they have four plugs on them and I can plug in those. Now the problem is that pool heater will use around 13, 14 amps. The mini splits will use anywhere from 8 to 12 amps. So I I can only be running like the two mini splits, one in each plug, or I can run one mini split and the pool heater. So I can't run all three of those. I'd have to run a separate line, but I just don't have the room and the channel that goes um, in between my cool creek and my patio to get another wire in there. Because <laughs> I had to run this flexible conduit through there to put the wires so they wouldn't get wet. So that's pretty much it. Just wanted to share that with you. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we will see you in the next video. I'll put links in the description. Hope, it, hope you have a truly wonderful and extremely blessed 2025.